are two strategies to pre-render pages in Next.js, and these strategies depend on the approach we take to fetch the data. If we need to fetch the data at build time because the data required to render the page is available ahead of a user's request, we should apply the static generation strategy. And you can watch the video on static sites generation with Next.js by following the link I'm going to put here at the top right corner. If we need to pre-render a page whose data must be fetched at request time, then we need to use server-side rendering. For server-side rendering, Next.js provides two functions that we can use in our pages, get initial props and get server-side props. If you're using Next.js 9.3 or newer, Next.js recommends to use get server side props instead of get initial props. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use get server side props function, fetching data using Prisma ORM and Postgres. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. This is a page in Next.js where we are applying an static site generation approach where we are rendering this page at build time. So here we are using the get static props function. And basically we are getting the data from this data file with these three elements. And we are returning that list as the props that is gonna be the input for this component. And here basically we are iterating over that list and we are showing the properties of each element here within this table. Now we are going to make a few changes here to use a server-side rendering approach to perform the rendering on runtime. So every time we receive a request, we are going to call the get server-side props function to retrieve the data that will be rendered within this component here. And instead of using this local file, we are going to use a Postgres database and we're going to use Prisma ORM to fetch the data. So now let's say that we build this page where we're using a static site generation approach. So if we run npm run build, here we're gonna see that we generated the shops page and here we have this reference here. So here we can see that we are generating the page using the static site generation approach. So if we make a change here and instead of using get static props, we use get server side props. And now if we build this page again, we're going to see that it's going to show this reference, this Lambda, showing that the page is rendered using a server-side approach. So I'm going to run the build again. And now, as we can see here, the shops page is using a server-side rendering approach. Okay, now let's quickly check the server-side rendering approach. So let's create a request counter. So every time that we call this page, is going to increment that value. And we're going to add a console log to show that. So this is let request count equals zero. And here I'm going to increment that value. Request count plus plus. And let's add a console log here. Okay, now let's build this npm run build. Again, we can see the shops page using a server-side rendering approach. And now let's run the server in production mode. This is npm run start. And here, if we open the page, we're going to see the request number. So if we refresh, now we're going to see two, we're going to see three and so on. Okay, let's clean this and now Let's remove this. And now instead of getting this shop list from this data file, let's work with Prisma ORM and Postgres to fetch the data from the database. Okay, now let's set up and run a new Postgres database using Docker. So this is Docker run dash dash name. Let's say Postgres DB. Let's map the ports minus p and let's use the default port for postgres 5432 for the local machine and also for the container so this is again 5432 and let's sign a password this is postgres password postgres minus the postgres now let's run this and this is going to pull the Docker image. And if we run Docker PS, the 
database is running, listening on port 5432. Okay, now let's go to Visual Studio Code. And here I already installed this plugin, this PostgreSQL Explorer. And here we can see the database. And we have our public schema with no tables. So first we are going to install Prisma and we're going to use migrations to create our first table based on the model that we're going to create with this ORM. So first let's open the terminal and let's install Prisma. So this is npm install at Prisma slash CLI dash dash save dev. Okay, now that the Prisma dependency has been installed, let's initialize the project for Prisma. So this is npx Prisma init. And as we can see here, this is going to create a new folder with this schema.prisma file where we need to set up this environment variable with the database URL. And here we are going to add our model that will allow us to generate the database table that is going to contain the data that we want to show in our page. So first let's define this environment variable here within this env file. So this is Postgres as the user and as the password and the name of the database will be Postgres. And let's go back to this schema.prisma file and let's create our shop model that will be basically a uh, structure that is going to represent this data that we are showing here with these four fields id title company and location okay now let's go to the schema file and let's create our shop model so this is model shop and here we are going to add the properties of the shop so we're going to have an identifier this will be an int and this will be the identifier for the table and this value will be an auto increment value. So this is default. So basically we can use this decorator to specify what is the default value to be assigned to the field. So this will be a special function that is auto increment. Then we're gonna have a title for the shop. This will be a string and this will be unique. Then we're gonna have the company that will be a string. And then we're gonna have the location of the shop that will be a string as well. Okay, here we have our model ready. So now we are going to run a command that we, is going to create a new table here in our database. So now we are going to run a command with Prisma and it's going to generate the table based on this definition. So this is npx Prisma migrate. And this is dev. And here we need to use a special flag for this feature. This is dash dash preview feature. And here we need to assign a name for the migration because it's going to store the DDL sentences, basically the SQL sentences to create the table within a file with the name that we're going to assign here. So this is initial migration. And as we can see here, it's going to generate a folder with that name. And this is the file where we're gonna see the SQL with the DDL to create the table. And another thing that it's going to do here is going to generate the Prisma client so that we can use this client to access the database. Another way to generate this Prisma client is running npx Prisma generate. So now if we refresh this database connection, we're gonna see that we have the shop table with no values. As you can see here is empty. And here we're gonna have another table with the changes that we applied in the database. This allows us to keep track on the versioning of the schema. Okay, now let's close everything here. And there's a tool that comes with Prisma, that is Prisma Studio, where we can edit the fields of the table. So this is npx Prisma Studio. This is a web tool that we're gonna see in a second. And here we can see all our models. In our case, we only have one model that is the shop model that's centered there. And here we're gonna have the records from the database. So I'm going to click on add record. I'm going to give the identifier with the auto increment value. 
and I'm going to set a title for a new job. I'm going to grab the values from the file that we have here. So let's copy this. Senior Rocket Engineer. The company will be Google and the location will be remote. Let's save this change. Okay. And I'm going to add the rest of the shops really quickly. Okay. And here we have the same values that we have within this file. Okay. So now let's go to our page and let's work with the Prisma ORM to fetch the data. So I'm going to remove this import from here. We are not going to use the data file anymore. I'm going to remove this. And first we need to import the Prisma client. So this is import. This is Prisma client from, and this is add Prisma slash client like this. Okay. And here I'm going to create a new client const Prisma equals to new Prisma client. And here I'm going to get the list of shops from the database. So this is const all shops and this is Prisma dot shop dot find many and this is await. I'm going to paste that value here. Okay, let's clear this. And now I'm going to build and run the application again. npm run build. And now let's run the application in production mode. npm run start. Okay, and now if we refresh the page, we're gonna see the list of shops that we get from the database. Okay, let's open Prisma Studio again, npx Prisma Studio. And let's make a few changes so that we can validate that we are actually getting data from the database. So I'm going to open a new terminal here and let's run the application. npm run start. So here we can see the shops that we have in the database. And for example, if I delete this shop from here and I refresh, we're going to see that the value will be removed from the page. And the same if I delete the second record. And now if I refresh the page, we're going to see that we only have the shop that is within the database here. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.